Over the last few months, we have been slowly making progress, restoring this historic property in the foothills of the Italian Alps and making it into our home. Last week, we built a garden bed with a stone walkway and began planting our garden. In the process, we had to bring down good quality soil from higher up in the mountain, which is when we made a surprising discovery. I think we just found a natural spring. This week, we dig out the natural spring, uncovering several unique discoveries along the way. There's a bone! <laughs> also that we can make a small but beautiful natural pond. All right, so today is the day. It's been a couple days since we first discovered this spring. It's gonna be a lot of work to dig it out, so we didn't have time to dig it out last week, but I have so many ideas. If we can find enough water, so many ideas of what we can do with this. I'm definitely anxious to see what we can dig out. Well, <laughs> we've got some water. I think we should be able to get this flowing. Oh, it is flowing a bit more. So it's going to stop flowing a lot until, yeah, we, until we get to the dig out a lot more of it. Find the source, really. Look at this. It's like a teeny glass bottle. You think it was like for milk or something? What do you? What would you put in? Set it aside. That's pretty cool. That's really cool. But what would you put in a bottle this little? Probably almost a year's supply of firewood just in this ravine. Yeah, I know. There's so many trees up here. So I can't tell, but it almost looks like they stack the stones. Yeah, they stack up. Like, like those are giant stones. Like they intentionally tr um, stop the flow or something. I don't know. Why would they do it? I'm not sure. Someone tried to betray them? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, that's, that's, that's a, a big yeah. stone. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> no! Is that what I think it is? Ew! 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 There's a bone! <laughs> I don't want to look at it. Ooh, That's giant! Is that what from? is that from? Dinosaur. No. What is Throw it away! It's gross! I don't like it! Ew! <laughs> what is that from? A cow or something probably? Probably. Oh. What? What do you do with that? With it. I just popped out there. That's crazy. What else are we gonna find? <laughs> oh, good idea. What I want to know is how come my breaks from digging involve digging? <laughs> it's so slippery. Can't get a grip on it. <laughs> we can hear the yeah the gurgling. the gurgling in the water. That's crazy. Yeah, when he lifted up a bit, I could see like some water underneath, which is really good. Oh my goodness! Oh wow! Oh, that's a stone. That's probably always been there. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard to tell, but they've dug out this stone box, built this stone box, presumably to funnel the water into the canal so that so it could, we think. So then it could fl uh, flow down the river here. There's a canal built for a long, long way down the edge of the property. Very quickly, there's a stone uh, blockage right behind here. It does not look like they set up the stones to block the flow of water to me. It looks like those are structural, have always been there to hold the box up and then the water would slow down but seep around the edges. Clearly the water um, is much lower than it used to be because the water's coming out of the rocks um, a good 30 centimeters or a foot below this box now. I'm gonna at least look and see if dislodging those rocks is easy. But no. Just be careful because these might I, I think these have always been here. If it's that hard to move, probably. And 
the the dirt up close to the rocks is much drier than the dirt below. So I think the the water level has just Ew. dropped dramatically. I just moved a pretty a decent sized stone, not too big, and they were just sitting in water. So we'll see if there's it's like rock right here around it. I don't know. I'm thinking like what Alexa was saying. We need to go this way. And you have to say mountain goat mode enabled. Mountain goat mode enabled. And then you have to say bye. Bye. Some goat say? No. Let's say eh. Eh. <laughs> mountain goat mode enabled. Isn't this cool? Cool. Koala cool. <laughs> we have our own little cave. This is the first time you've seen this, right? Yep. Can you see where the water would have flown through the cave? Right through there. The see, the water would have cut a hole right through there. Yeah. It still drips out. You can see how it's a little bit wet. Yeah. But not a spot that we can hang out too much. It's a, it doesn't look to be safe. super stable. Eventually it'll collapse. Yeah. Not right now, hopefully. So while I've uh, outsourced some of the digging, I was working down there, thought I'd show you the little cave. We have uh, two spots like this. This is the, the biggest one. They are super cool. I wish they were more usable, but they're just a little bit degraded. There are some spots here that make me want to build some sort of outdoor natural rock climbing area for the kids. I think I have too many project ideas. What do you think these are? Beans. You want it nice and soft so the young baby roots can get through it. So this week my uh, mom is visiting us. If you missed our last video, she came to uh, spend some time with us obviously and then help us put our garden in. Uh, the reason my dad couldn't come is he's actually finishing up a huge project he's been working on. So that's actually where I've gotten all of my construction skills from. He spent his entire life uh, building these, these high-end beautiful homes and then recently switched to building tiny houses, but building them designed to be off-grid very much like what we're doing here. So they are solar powered. They uh, have rainwater collection system, which is so unique for a tiny house that purifies the water. Uh, but then these are designed to be luxury, smart, intelligent, tiny houses that are fully functioning off-grid, which is incredible. So we've been chatting back and forth and getting ideas of uh, taking his ideas and incorporating them on the property here. Um, but he just finished up a couple days ago, which is awesome. So if, if anyone's interested in a tiny house, I'm gonna put the link, because even just to browse and get ideas and whatnot, it's a pretty cool, pretty unique place. There's something right here that is very big. big. Like, this is really good in here. Yeah, the more I dig out, the more it just starts flying. Oh, look at that. Oh my goodness. That's so good. Oh my goodness. So, I think it's pretty cool because look, it's, it's a very natural stone basin. The back wall is stone, side walls yeah. are stone. This is solid stone all the way up here. And then it has a natural stone lip here. Oh wow. With the... The stones that we found over there, we could 
put it across here. And make a little pond. pond. Make a little pond. That'd be cool. Fill the water. Um, well, after a while, some fish the, and some frogs. Once we clean all of the stone and then flush the water out, the water would naturally flow out clear. It's only flowing out yeah. muddy, muddy right now because Water. There's so much loose dirt. That would be so cool. And then if we cut down all of the dead trees, yeah. it would be this natural little oasis. Um, oasis. I love it. Oasis. Um, I'm thinking about a little waterfall right here. That would be so cool. That would be so cool. I love that idea. Right now it looks like chocolate milk. <laughs> it does kind of look like chocolate milk. This might work as uh, a lintel replacement inside of the house. It's all dry and ready to go. So without sounding too nerdy, I know the camera won't be able to resolve the image and kind of portray it as it actually is. Camera sensors don't like all of the leaves and the fine detail. And so you'll have to trust me that this area is just very, very stunning, a very a beautiful spot. And uh, I didn't expect to be clearing this out and didn't expect to be collecting as much uh, firewood as we uh, have already and a couple of them are very usable for building uh, material but I'm excited to clear this space out and uh, finish off this nice beautiful kind of secluded oasis that's always kind of covered in this beautiful shade and the the birds are gonna love having the water here just a little bit of water that was left here from when we first discovered the spring I would come back here and find two or three birds drinking from it. Around Stella's old house. <laughs> oh, work on that balance. <laughs> my car. Yeah. <laughs> Yay, you got your stick. Nope, fire needs a lot of air. Take out the air, it goes out. I decorated my marshmallow stick. So for those who are not from the USA, these are roasting marshmallows. This is, I believe, very much an American thing. When I uh, um, lived in Ukraine, we could not find these at all, and now we cannot find these here. Uh, but typically you roast them on a fire and then have graham crackers and uh, chocolate. But instead, since we couldn't find graham crackers, we found these uh, chocolate-covered cookies. And then you make a little sandwich out of it. It's a very messy dessert. Oh wow, that's actually very good like that. Mom, will you tell the kids the story of how we couldn't used to be able to buy marshmallows and then they were shipped over to us and then what would happen to oh. them? <laughs> so there were two things that, two things that we really missed 
when we lived overseas was soft toilet paper because really? it was I don't really that. soft toilet paper and marshmallows. So your daddy's grandma shipped us a box as a special treat, and in it were soft toilet paper and marshmallows. And the toilet paper ended up smelling like marshmallows. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. I remember being... We had being... marshmallow-scented toilet paper, which was kind of cool. Yeah, that's not I bad. I remember being different. Uh, maybe one shipment was different. I remember she putting she put marshmallows with soap. And it, the, and and it the tasted marshmallows like tasted, soap. And the marshmallows tasted like soap. <laughs> yeah, I think I remember was, that, too. I like a... the marshmallow-scented toilet paper. Yeah, that that's was nice. nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's a kind of a happy accident right yeah. there. Yeah, that's fun. I don't remember that. Um, but now that you say that, yeah. And then we just eventually got used to the really scratchy toilet paper. So. <laughs> I think, have you guys been doing like an open face sandwich? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's good the that best. I'm going to have Grammy Okay. Grammy, did, Grammy is better So I think it's been since the very first video that we made renovating the stone house in Italy that we showed you guys the apartment that we're living in, uh, at least while we're not allowed to live in the stone house until we get to a point where we're legally allowed to live in it. But today I'm gonna to bring you guys back because I wanna tell you about today's video sponsor. So about a month ago, we received a box from Cozy Earth, who is a premium bedding and loungewear manufacturer who makes all of their material from super soft viscose. So the unique thing about this material is that it's silky smooth, moisture wicking, and temperature regulating, and is made from highly sustainable bamboo. So I tend to get really hot in the middle of the night, so I'll rip off the covers, but then I get too cold and I'll put them back again, and the cycle kind of repeats itself back and forth. But this material is temperature regulating, so it allows for a much more comfortable sleep. So I am a huge fan of loungewear. I actually would live in it if I could. I have this new navy top that is so comfortable and comfort is key for me when it comes to clothing, bedding, towels, everything. And these Cozy Earth products are really, really incredible. They're so smooth and luxurious. So the feeling of the material is a little hard to describe until you feel it for yourself. This is their men's ultra soft bamboo hoodie. It's easily the softest material I've ever worn and it has that cooling effect that I mentioned before. I don't know how to be a fashion model. So if you would like to experience their products for yourself, you can use the coupon code RAISING35 for 35% off your order site-wide. There'll be a link in the description below. Now let's get back to the video. What are they doing in Stella's house? I don't know. But they're so cute. Hi. Oh. Hi. Hello. Oh. Hi, puppies. Oh, they're so cute. What are they doing in there? I don't know. They want to get out. They think. Are are you are they trapped in there? They actually, they might be trapped in there. Come on. Were you guys stuck in here? Did you guys get stuck? Do you need me to help you get out? Here, I'll help you get out. Come on. Come on. Oh, you're so cute. Come here. Come here. Oh, come here. Oh, you're heavy. Chunky little guy. Oh. Did you guys get stuck? How did you get in here? Come here. Come here, I'll help you get out. Oh. How did you guys get in here? This is Stella's old house. This isn't your house. Oh, come on, come on. Oh, you peed on me. Gross. No, don't, don't crawl back up there. Come on, let's go find your mommy, okay? 
Puppy. Come here. Come here. Can you come here, please? Come here. Come here. A little closer. Come here. Come here. Oh, let's go. Oh, don't pee. Come on. I'm not going to hurt you. Here's your mommy. Do you see your mommy? I'm just helping mommy, okay? Come here. Oh. All right. All right, let's go outside, okay? No, 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 no. I was just helping. It's a, no, no, shh, a, no, no. The mama has left them. Yeah, this day just keeps getting stranger and stranger. Hey, no one poop in my car, okay? This is the best day of my life. No one poop in my car. <laughs> we have five, five wolves in our car. Yeah, we're trying to get them home because they're just in our house. The mo their mom left them, so we're just trying to get them back to the house. Uh, hey, buddy. I'm sorry, it's a little scary Go grab him back. Yeah. We'll be there soon, okay? <gasps> Hi! You're so cute! Yep, we're almost to your house, okay? Yeah, we're almost there. Almost there. <laughs> yep, we'll be there soon, okay? Yeah, you'll get to see your mama. Yeah. Your dada. Even the uh, the bees are very happy about the uh, the spring coming back to life. There's three or four of them swarming around, and every chance they get, they land and try to drink out of this. So what I'm doing now is both aesthetic and practical. Um, I'm removing some of the stones because they kind of got washed in and I'm replacing them in a more aesthetic pleasing way, but also practically to widen the stone basin to collect more water. But my brain uh, on projects like these goes a little bit too far. I'm already envisioning this thing could go so far. It could be a natural spring once the water level rises back up. It could be rainwater collection, or you could take it so far and create a wood-fired natural onsen or uh, a little natural hot tub. It would be surprisingly easy, I mean these bees, surprisingly easy just to off there have a wood-fired stove, whether out of metal or a wood, or sorry, or a uh, stone stove, and then to heat a coil that takes the water and heats the water up and very quickly you could turn the natural spring into a natural hot tub. But I think we should finish the house first. <sighs> Moving big stones when they're so slippery is less than ideal. So slippery.
there's close to a hundred gallons of water in here. You can't quite see it on camera, but there is just a small trickle of water coming down from the spring. And over time, it fills up rather quickly. I'm going to try to siphon it out so that I can continue working. So I guess this is kind of a preview for the whole reason that we're going through this. That's about 100 gallons of water that accumulated in just a day. And once we're done stacking the rocks, I'm guessing two to 300 gallons of water potentially. I'll have to run some math on that and take some measurements. But that's going to be a lot of water on an ongoing basis that we can use to pipe down and water our garden in a never-ending trickle of water, water some fruit trees, or use for whatever.
my goodness. Wow. It's like completely transformed. Oh, yeah, because you haven't seen it back here since no. I got the trees down. Wow. How much water do we have? A good amount of water. Uh, we've got a couple leaks. A leak it's, there, uh, there, yeah. and here. And it's clearing up. Yeah. Wow. There's a big leak Oh, my here. goodness. Yeah, I see that, but wow, it looks so good. It looks so clear, This too. is so cool. You want to get in? No. <laughs> It's no. not hot yet. <laughs> not hot yet. We need to build a, a, a wood fire. Now, what uh, about either. cleaning it up? <laughs> we can clean it up. Yeah, before we go, we can clean it up. Ooh, mosquito eater. So the question is now, mosquito do we eater. save... <gasps> Spider! And the wolves are so loud. <laughs> do we save uh, the water for the garden, mosquito or do we turn it into a hot tub? I mean, <laughs> hot tub sounds nice hot to me. Hot tub! <laughs> Practically, it'd be better for the garden. What's the difference between spider and mosquito eater? So it looks like we're getting, I would say, about 100 gallons a day. Wow. From maybe 150 gallons a day from the spring. Um, incredible. This, which means this should have been completely full by now, but we have a the leak. leak. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. It looks great. So I think that's actually a decision we have to make. Do we use the overflow for the garden, or do we properly clean it up and add a wood-fired heater and turn it into a hot tub. Now that we've taken down all of the overgrowth, it's kind of a beautiful spot. I can imagine some kind of fairy lights hanging over this area, build a wood-fired heater and start a fire in a couple hours, you would have a hot tub. Or maybe a combination, maybe it's overflow for the garden and then when you want it as a hot tub, you can light that fire. So not completely finished, got to uh, fix those leaks, build the wall a little higher, but I'd say it has maybe three to 400 gallon capacity, which is pretty awesome. So before we sign off this week's video, we just wanted to hop on a bit and say a thank you because we have been able to have a few video calls this week, which has been so much fun. We've really loved getting to know some of you a little bit more. Hey, Renee. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm great. How are you guys doing? Doing fantastic. It's so nice to meet you. If you don't know what we're talking about, a couple weeks ago, we, we said we wanted to thank those who wanted to help support us in building this historic home by engraving your names on bricks and then doing video calls. And those video calls have already started and it's been super cool to meet you guys, uh, not in person, but face to face at yeah. least. And that's been a really neat thing. So. If that sounds like something that you want to hop on, we'll leave a link in the description and we of course would welcome your support, but thank you so much for supporting us and watching this week's video and we will see you next week.